Moving along then, um, let's look at how to take our, um, our transformed coefficients from whatever transform we use and convert that to a, a one-dimensional string of values. So this shows a um, typical 8x8 eight eight block where let's say we've done a uh, threshold uh, keeping only the top say 25% or something like that. So what we would see is um, ones where we have we, where we want to keep values those coefficients and zero otherwise. And as, as we expect they're mostly clustered um, in the upper left here and values near the um, the lower right tend to be zero. So to convert this to a one-dimensional string of values, we take our coefficients um, in, in this order. So we'll start at the top left, we'll take the um, one next to it, and then the one below that, and then kind of keep taking them in the sort of zigzag order like this. And the reason we want to do that is because um, Again, I said that we're likely to have uh, pointer options. We're likely to have zeros in the lower right. So by the time we, our zigzag gets down to the lower right, um, we have long runs of zeros, and we're going to end up using run length coding to encode those long runs of zeros. So that's very efficient. All right. So once we have the um, coefficients that we want to keep, um, put them in the order that we want. Um, let's let's quantize them to reduce the number of bits. And one way to do that is to um, is to divide those coefficients by a constant. So this shows a uh, mask of divisors that we're going to apply to all of our coefficients in an 8 by 8 block. So the upper left value, the upper left coefficient gets divided by 16. Uh, this one gets divided by 11. This one gets divided by 10, and so forth. And as you can see, they more or less, the divisor in, divisors increase as we get down to the lower right here. And, and so what that's, the reason we're doing this, this is, this is created empirically, by the way, um, is that we've found that um, the coefficients of with high values of u and v are less important to reconstructing the image. So we can quantize them more. So if we divide a value, say, by 100, um, and then uh, truncate the fractional part, so we bas basically round it off to an integer, then basically values above 100 um, become a 1, values below 100 become a 0. And so we, we can essentially represent this by very few bits. Um, whereas points up here, if I divided, say, by 10, um, then I, I would get an integer that might range from, I don't know, 1 to uh, 16 or something like that or more. So I would need more bits to, uh, to encode these values. And one handy thing with this method is that it's easy to adjust the amount of compression. So simply take this um, divisor mask and, um, and scale it. So this shows um, an image um, that has been uh, compressed using that divisor matrix on the previous page. So pretty good reconstruction. Um, this image shows um, a, a reconstructed image where we have compressed it using a divisor mask that is twice this. So for example, the first value is going to be a 32, this is a 22, this is a 20, and so forth. So we end up using even less bits per pixel uh, because we're really quantizing those results. Um, and then this would be, uh, if we do a 4 times that, 8 times that, 16, and 32. So with each successive result, we get a, um, a worse and worse reconstruction. Of course, the compression ratio is much higher as we do that. 
So I think we're ready to look at the complete JPEG algorithm. It kind of puts all these pieces together. Um, so the JPEG algorithm divides the image into eight by eight sub-images, applies a DCT on each sub-image, quantizes the coefficients using threshold coding, orders them in that zigzag pattern, and then takes the resulting sequence and um, encodes that using run length encoding and Huffman coding. So an example, here's a um, just a simple 8x8 eight eight image uh, showing the actual values. Um, the first step is actually to subtract 128 from each value, so we center them about 0. Next, we do a forward DCT, so these are the resulting DCT coefficients. And then we uh, apply that divisor array and, uh, and truncate the fractional results. So for example, the upper left divisor was 16, remember? So I, I'm dividing the DCT coefficient of minus 415 by a 16, and the result is a minus, one, a minus 26. And so, as you can see, that forces um, the magnitudes to greatly fall off down here, mostly wind up with a lot of zeros. And then we, uh, we use that zigzag order to get the, um, the, the, the coefficients in a one-dimensional vector or list. So there's the list of coefficients. Um, <coughs> Now we'll use variable length code words to encode the non-zero values. <clears throat> and again, um, small values, I'm sorry, more common values, we use small code words. And, and values that are not so common, we can use long code words. And finally, use run length encoding to encode the number of zeros. So this minus 26 is encoded using this code word. A minus 3 is using this code word, a 1 is using this one, and so forth. So in this example, the total number of bits is 92. We started with 512 bits in that 8 by 8 image, so we get a compression ratio of 5.6 to 1. A little bit more details of uh, coding those coefficients. The uh, Huffman code is actually a pre-computed code, and this page just shows the details of how that's uh, computed. I won't go into that though. All right, let's look at another method, um, lossy compression, using uh, what's called predictive coding. So here we take our input image, and uh, for each value that comes in, we predict the next value, basically the one uh, to the right of it or the one below it, or maybe um, uh, we predicted based on a function of some small group that we've seen before. So um, <clears throat> we then compare it to the actual value. If we're correct, if we predicted correctly, we get a zero error. Um, if we haven't predicted correctly, hopefully we're close and the error is small. And then we go ahead and encode the errors and those are, that's our compressed image. To reconstruct it, um, we undo that, so we, we uh, decode these symbols, and then we're essentially um, accumulating these errors using the same predictor, and that will produce the original image exactly. So this is a lossless predictive coding. So, so why do we want to do this? Well, the reason is that usually we're pretty good about predicting the next value that the next value is usually pretty close to the original, to, to, the, to the one we've already seen. So our errors are mostly around zero, and that means they're fairly easy to compress. Here is uh, an example of an image where um, this is the histogram of that image. So uh, it's kind of spread out, as you can see. Uh, the entropy is 7.25 bits per pixel. But if we apply this um, predictor method, just using a simple predictor that the pixel, the next pixel is equal to the previous pixel, then, um, and we just look at the error, 
that we have to save and transmit. This is the error image, and this is the histogram of the error. So in this case, they're pretty much all clustered around zero, very few pixels that are um, much different than zero. Entropy is much smaller, about 3.99. So theoretically, we should be able to compress the error image using 3.99 bits per pixel uh, instead of up here we had 7.25 bits per pixel.